Once your web mock-up is done, the next step in the web design process is to determine which parts of the layout will become web graphics and which parts can be generated with HTML and CSS. This is especially important because websites using HTML and CSS tend to be more search engine friendly and load faster in a browser window than their graphic heavy counterparts. One quick way to create these graphics from your mockup is to use Photoshop's slice tool. Let me show you how this works. If needed, you'll be dragging guides into your layout to define the different areas that need to be separated into web graphics. For this layout, we'll need the logo, the banner photo, the widget for the nav bar, the bullet in the footer, and the photo for the sidebar. Nearly everything else can be rendered in HTML and CSS. And if there are any guides at the end of the process that we don't need, we can remove them by dragging them off the artboard. So let's drag some guides in. I already have my logo ready. I already have the banner photo. So I just need one for the nav widget, the sidebar photo, and the footer. For best results, I will grab my zoom tool and zoom right on in there, select the object with my move tool, and when the object is selected, my guides will snap really nicely on there. Zoom back out, zoom in here, and do the same exact thing. Select the object with my move tool, nicely snapping guides. Now, some things the snapping feature doesn't really work that well with is the shapes that we used for our footer. So we're not going to select that one there. Instead, we'll just zoom in close and eyeball it. That shouldn't be too difficult. Zooming back out. And now we need the slice tool. The slice tool is located underneath the crop tool in your toolbar. Anytime you see a tool that has a little tiny black arrow, that means that there's a hidden set of tools underneath of it. Click on the tool to get the flyout menu and then navigate over and select the tool that you want to use. With the slice tool, all you need to do is click and drag and release to create a slice. And if your guides are on, then the slice tool will snap to your guides, which is very handy. So I've got my logo done. Now I need one for the banner. You don't have to worry about going outside the boundary here on the left and right. It will snap to. I'm going to zoom in for my nav widget, like so. And here for my photo. And then the last one is maybe zoom in a little bit for that bullet. And zooming back out. Notice that each slice has a little tab at the top left corner, like here. The tabs that are blue indicate the slices that I've created. The tabs that are gray are the slices that Photoshop will create for me, whether I want them or not. But those can be easily discarded after we optimize the graphics. The other thing I want to point out is that you can name your slices either after they've been optimized or before they're optimized here in Photoshop. To do that, right-click on one of those little tabs choose Edit Slice Options, and then change the name here. I'm going to leave that for now, and we can always change them later. Now, to optimize your graphics, you'll use the File Save for Web and Devices dialog box. Once that opens, all you need to do is choose the file format that you'd like to save in. Now, in this case, most of my graphics should be saved as a Ping 8 file, with the exception of this banner image. So I'll select that one, and I'll switch it over to a JPEG. Now, all I need to do is click on the Save button, and choosing the location or the destination for my files, I'd like to put them in this Images folder. I'm not going to worry about the file name at this point. As for format, I can choose images only, HTML only, or HTML and images, but I really just want the images at this point, so I'll leave it there. The other settings can stay as they are. Click the Save button, and Photoshop does its thing and optimizes all of my graphics. Let's go take a look at our images. Notice that the entire file was optimized, including the slices around the images that I actually wanted. Let's take a look at this in a different view so we can actually see the thumbnails here. So some of these I need, some of these I don't. What I will do, though, is rename the images while I'm here. So this is my Cupcake of the Month. So I can say Cupcake of Month. And I might change those every month. So for the month of January, I might put an underscore one. And as I create them each month, underscore two and so forth. 
There is my footer bullet, so I can call that one bullet. And there's my nav widget. And then the only other thing I need is my logo and my banner. And my banner. Let's call this one banner one so that I can create more banners for every page of the website. There are other workflows available that you can follow when optimizing web graphics, of course, but this way allows you to optimize and save several files in a variety of web formats all at once. All around, slicing images is a very nice way to maximize your time.